set it there. I said, does anyone know anything about this uh, Reinhardt getting, you know, Johansson? And the daughter uh, very immediately uh, contacted me. And then the granddaughter who was writing history of the family. So they provided me this, I think, very good photo. Uh, he's from Tromso, which is above the Arctic Circle, way, way up there, near Kirkenes in Norway. He led a very rugged life. His wife died late, leaving with five children, three boys, and two girls. Uh, he was 57 years old. He'd been a miner in Svalbard, but the British invaded. The Germans invaded. He thought this can't be good. He got a small boat to, to, uh, to uh, northern England, Scotland, and signed up on, in uh, Liverpool on board a ship. At the age of 57, he was the lowest of the low. He was just an able-bodied seaman, and, uh, and on, a, on a passage through the Bahamas carrying a vaporizing oil from Texas to Halifax, the ship was sunk, and he was badly injured. One of the guys was killed, left on the ship. The other, he made it to land. His, his sailors uh, left him in Abaco because he was in such bad shape, and they went to Nassau. He died really in the bush at a lumber camp. And his story, more than anything, inspired me. And that's a photo. I can't disclose the location because it hasn't been given to me, but it's a photo that pig hunters uh, gave me, and my amateur archaeologists, because it's, a, it's the National Trust land in Abaco, and that's the best I can do. But that's the photo grave, and there were several graves there. And uh, that's where he lies. And it's quite sad because his family had given a grave marker of died in Cornwall, Vermont, USA, because they'd simply been told, oh, well, you know, he died in Cornwall. And they, the only Cornwall they could find was in Vermont. And in fact, he died in Cornwall, so they're very relieved to know where he is now. Um, that's a picture of the Apple Queen, which is a British tanker on the top. Uh, that's a monument that uh, someone named Tony Bennett, uh, not the musician, but Tony Bennett, uh, erected in Abaco to these men that died, the three of them that drowned on the way in. Uh, and that's the damage to the submarine, the bow of the submarine on the right. So it's amazing what kind of documentary evidence you can find, uh, even today, you know, an actual photo of the damage. The Italians were pretty uh, loquacious. They had a lot of books they wrote about their exploits. Um, this is Tony Bennett's child on one of the three uh, burial stones in uh, Hopetown. So that's, um, uh, this is one, and that's two, and then there's a third one. So we believe, though we can't confirm without actually, you know, invading the, the, the grave, um, we believe that the British that were washed ashore. Uh, and that that's, that there's no grave marker, there's no uh, headstone, but they were buried under stones over time. We, it's hard to say. Uh, that's a typical merchant captain. That, he was the captain of Del Mondo who was sunk in the uh, Windward Passage. Sort of a jolly guy. Looks to me like a likable uh, guy. Um, on the right is a, a, an apprentice seaman that wrote a memoir about being sunk in a ship uh, in the Bahamas. And his ship actually isn't included in my research uh, much, but uh, they sighted rocks uh, and, and they sighted land as after like a 10-day voyage near the Turks and Caicos. But because they didn't actually set foot in the Bahamas, I, they were rescued by another ship. Uh, you know, it's not really verified. Uh, this is the Signet, which the Galanders brothers, the Galanders um, have been uh, residents in the Bahamas for some years, and they've owned ships for probably 100 years. Uh, and this is a ship, interestingly enough, um, there was a mortgage on a building that included this ship, the Signet, which had been Dutch, as collateral. So right when I was doing my research, they had the books on this ship open 60 years later because they, had, they were selling the building. So they, they have, by, by, good, by good fortune, there was quite a lot of detail on this particular ship. And you can see on the side, it has its name, the Miroc, and Holland on the side. The fact is, if you sailed in the Bahamas during World War II, you were at a high risk of getting sunk. Uh, because uh, no matter whether you're neutral or not. So it was a dangerous time. These are the submarines. Again, give me the colors are very good. But uh, you know, here, here again is Florida, Cuba, and the, the West Indies, and this is Bermuda. So uh, these, these are all the subs that were sunk in the area. Um, the subs uh, down on the bottom were really outside the Bahamas area. They're south of Hispaniola. One of them was rammed by a Canadian ship, the Oville, and survived and were taken to, uh, to camp uh, in the States. Uh, the, the mortality rate among uh, German submariners was 66 percent, which I think was higher than any other in any of the armed forces. I don't know about the Japanese, but um, it was very high. So when the men were captured alive, they were generally uh, very grateful uh, to be alive and to be taken, you know, taken to a camp and to rest the rest of the war out. Um, the U-84, uh, this one was surprised by an airplane. Uh, this was also surprised by an airplane south of Bermuda. They had taken some captives and they were stunning on deck. The captives weren't very adapted at getting down the hatch fast enough, so that made them very vulnerable. Wasn't, they shouldn't have taken the captives looking back, but there's pictures of these uh, amateurs scrambling around on deck. Uh, and then uh, this was sunk off Key West, Key South Bank, 
uh, south of uh, Windward Passage and south of Haiti. So the closest, uh, this is the one that's closest to the Bahamas. It's quite right close to Esquizal. And there was a BBC filming expedition that claims to have discovered the submarine when they were looking for a, a Spanish Armada type vessels. There's the inner tubes that they got off the, the ships coming back into port. The Germans were generally behind the Allies in technology. The Allies would invent radar. The Germans would try to signal to jam the radar. Uh, they would, the Allies would find a way to detect the subs at night, the radar or otherwise, the centrometric radar. The Germans would have these. These were all efforts to uh, to deflect the radar beam and, they, and to suppress their own radio signal. So but generally, towards, especially towards the end of the war, the Germans were woefully uh, behind in terms of technology. And, uh, the one thing the Allies had is they broke the codes. So they could understand where the Germans were refueling and generally where the subs were. Uh, this is more subs that were sunk. Uh, the, the one on the bottom in white was sunk by the Americans off Key West. And, uh, and then there's a number of subs off Hatteras. So this is called Torpedo Junction. So north of the Bahamas was very active um, and south. Uh, this is, you know, how do you write a book or how do you learn about all this stuff? Uh, you can look for personal memoirs of sailors that were in the region. Uh, you can look at the track of every single German torpedo. The, you know, the Germans catalog every torpedo spent. And there's books that will tell you in very clinical detail, you know, what went wrong with each torpedo, what kind of torpedo it was, what time and date, location, where it went. So you have, uh, the German records are very good, although I don't speak German. Um, on the left is a list of marine casualties from Lloyd's List. And on the right is a valuable tool, is every ship that was sunk in the Western Hemisphere, if there were survivors, even if there weren't, there was a report, but generally survivor statements. So they would say, you know, I was asleep in my bunk, and suddenly a torpedo hit on the starboard side, and I would really scramble for lifeboats, and four minutes the ship went down. And the extremely detailed reports, which are very, very helpful. And you know, sometimes you'll have four lifeboats, and they all get rescued in different. One lands in Haiti, one lands in the Bahamas, one lands in, uh, you know, gets rescued by a Swedish ship, another one gets rescued by a you know, Guyanese ship. So uh, it's pretty confusing. Um, this is just a list of uh, uh, the resources that are available. There was an American destroyer, the Warrington, that was sunk in a hurricane uh, that, that very sadly led to the loss of 248 men, uh, and about 100 were rescued. Uh, so that, that only happened, there happened to be a submarine in the area, but the reason that it was going through the Bahamas at that time was to protect other ships against U boat attack. So it wasn't attacked by the, the U boat, but it was sunk uh, during the war. Um, let's see. Yeah, I mean, the task of tracking these submarines, unless you win the town, is a bit like standing on a major highway uh, and trying to track how many vehicles and vessels are going by and what their business is. So at, at some point, I have to give up. But I did write a 700 page history, which is the Bahamas chronolo chronologically day by day. So every day from 40, 41, uh, right up to 45, uh, anything that happened of note, U boats that were in the area, ships that were sunk, and that's, uh, that's 17,000 know, the data points. And that's available in the archive for anyone to go, anyone brave enough to take a look. Um, it's uh, largely untold. People generally don't know. I, you know, I don't know, I, I could ask a show of hands, but how many people here knew that there were submarines uh, prowling around the Bahamas of all places? So, yeah, so about half the audience here. You're a lot more well-read than, uh, than an audience in the States. Uh, so uh, again, lack of centralized command is very diffuse. Uh, the, the, the men who survived and landed in the Bahamas, a lot of them were killed on other ships and sunk on other ships. And some of them were sunk by the Japanese in the Indian Ocean. Uh, they were uh, really were sent right back to work. Uh, like Canadians would be set up, separated from the crew and sent right back to Canada. So uh, there, was, there was little time for reflection. And that's it. So uh, I can
And then I said, well, what about uh, movie receipts that were said to be found on German sailors? He said, well, sometimes they would interact with the guys in the lifeboats and get souvenirs for the girlfriends or go on board a ship and, and collect souvenirs. But um, he, he said it, they were terrified that they would never go in shallow water in the Bahamas. So it would have been suicide. The aircraft would have seen them right away. So unfortunately, they did go about 30 miles north. They passed from the you know, whole of all to Great Isaac's Light. But they were strictly business. They didn't stop and they didn't uh, interact with the Bahamians.